In this video, we're going to do project breakdown and apply sequences and possibly lots as well to our schedule. Notice that we've got in here detailing, fabrication, shipping, and erection tasks. These were the scheduled tasks in the last video that we did. Now we're going to apply a breakdown to those and put some sequences in. So I'm going to enter edit mode there. <clears throat> we're going to go to project breakdown and we are going to go new um, project breakdown item there is no this uh, we don't have any breakdown items entered yet so we can't make this a uh, child to any any of them yet so we're going to say first of all sequence now as a reminder the reason sequence is showing up here is because we had chosen in our in our settings to break this down by sequence then by lot or at least give ourselves the ability to do that so that's why sequence is showing up here i could also put in a um, description as well um, but uh, so you know some people will put in like first sequences anchor bolts um, so you could put that in if you want i i usually just leave it blank um, and but you could put one in there and include in task description if you'd like assembly quantity part quantity and weight you could fill that in as well if you wanted to once again I'm going to put these in on the schedule um, or on the, on the Gantt chart so and some of this will flow over from from production schedule as well um, the one thing to note the sequence number here if you want to pull data over from the from production control, such as the number of pieces, the weight of those pieces, then this sequence number must match the uh, sequence number that's going to be in production control. It must be identical. So in other words, I can't do SEQ1 and then expect that to match up in production control in the sequence field where it's just the number one so it has to match exactly so just make sure that's the case and we'll fill all that in we're good to go and then down here we'll apply links to this in just in just a minute so now i'm going to go new we're going to add in another sequence sequence two and what i'm going to do here is i'm, I'm going to link to the previous uh, breakdown items. So I'm going to say one is going first, then two, and then I'm going to say this is going to be in a finish start. So one has to finish before two will start. Once again, just like I could on the scheduled tasks, I could do an interval here if I wanted to as well. I'm not going to put in any interval. So let's add in a couple more sequences here. Three. got all of these set up and now if we go over to our Gantt chart we should see now that every scheduled task has sequences underneath it so we've got that under detailing fabrication shipping and erection just remember over on scheduled tasks if I go to like detailing we had chosen to do um, break to apply breakdown to detailing so um, note also that they are blanked out. So once you set that up, if you're like, oh, I don't want sequences applied to there, um, you'd, you'd, you'd have to do one of two things. Either you're going to delete this and change that, or I can back on our project breakdown over here. I can say that this applies to only particular tasks and say, hey, we're only going to apply this to fabrication, shipping, and erection, then sequence one won't be applied to uh, the detailing if I wanted to. So a couple different ways of doing that there. So I'm going to leave it applied to everything and save that. And we have our basic schedule set up. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you too. I'm going to add in a couple lots here just to show you, then I'll probably take them back out. I just want to show you for um, demonstration purposes. If I went new here and said that under sequence one, notice how this changed from sequence to lot because it knows I'm linking back to sequence one as the parent. So I'm going to put a lot under there. I'm going to say lot 25. 
and I could name that as well if I wanted to. And I'm going to say add, and you're going to see now I have a lot 25 under there. So let's do the same thing, but do a 26 here. I'm going to link that to the previous one as well. So I'm going to say 25 has to have before 26. And I need to do that as a finish start here. Finish start, save. So you see, I, I can very easily put lots underneath the sequences if I if I needed to. So I'm going to close that. And if I go to the Gantt chart, you'll see that lots start filling in under all of these as well. Um, so once again here, um, I could apply that to just specific ones if I wanted to, just to, but we're going to leave it applied to all. And so it's very simple to add in lots. It's very simple to add in sequences as well. So I've got a simple, got a simple schedule built right here. We'll come back next time. We'll talk about some of these fields here that we're going to fill in.